Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our worship video for Sunday, May 17th, 2020. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today's Gospel reading, uh, when we hear that in a little bit, it is a continuation from last week's Sunday's Gospel. Jesus is still speaking with his disciples and preparing them for what will come next. To ease their anxieties, he promises the Father will send an advocate, who we call the Holy Spirit, to guide us along the way. So we look forward to hearing more about that advocate and the role that advocate plays in our lives today. I give thanks for all who continue to remember the ministry of the congregation by sending their offerings to the church office or continuing their electronic um, automatic uh, giving uh, means. We do appreciate and thank you so very much for all that you do in supporting the ministry. I'm going to separately record and upload to YouTube three hymns for this week's worship. Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, hymn number 800 from our ELW. Spirit of Gentleness, hymn number 396. And then a Gaither song, you may recognize this. I think we've sung this in the past as well. Uh, because He Lives, beautiful song. And uh, look forward to sharing that with you this week through those separate videos. Thank you to Janice Algren, who played the piano, for those uh, three hymns that we sang uh, this week. The words for those hymns will be uploaded also as a PDF that you will find linked to in the email that you got uh, that shared this video with you. It's also on our website, so you can download it from the website. Please take a moment to download the Faith at Home PDF that has other pieces uh, to use within worship, the Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer, things that you are able to do at home, such as a remembrance of baptism, a order for writing prayers and how to do prayers of intercession at home as a family. It's got short descriptions of each of the readings, uh, as well as uh, reflections on the readings that you can use for conversation uh, at home about the topics found in today's Gospel reading. Today, our congregation will honor those graduating in our community. We have three high school students who are members of our congregation who are graduates this year, and we have one college graduate who's a member of our church that we're going to recognize as well. We've got Maddie Blazing, Dylan Esbaum, Heidi Gallagher, who are all our high school graduates, and Jacob Ide, who graduated in January from Carl Sandburg Community College. We'll have a moment a little bit later during our liturgy, recognizing these four young people and blessing them for what comes next. Next week, Sunday, uh, will be a special day for us with these graduates. Uh, we'll meet here at the church parking lot at 5 p.m. and we will begin a car parade to go to their homes. You'll be invited to bring a greeting card for each of the graduates as you wish, um, but we'll drive by each of their homes and uh, extend our greetings to them and share uh, a time with them. More information about that opportunity will be found in today's email as well as our church this week, which I'll send out on Monday, and a reminder again next week, Friday, when I send out this uh, next week's video worship information. Let us prepare ourselves now for worship. This is the day, this is the day, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This, this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice, and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that, that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
This is the day. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join with me now in the Kyrie with the responses, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for the holy places, we gather watching our online worship. And for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. And all of God's people reply, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Risen Jesus, we struggle in your absence. We wonder if we are following you in the right way. We wonder if we are making the right difference in the world. You promised your disciples you would not abandon us, that an advocate would come and lead us in your ways. Help us to know this advocate. Help us to hear the voice of the advocate leading us and guiding us in your right ways. May we, in turn, be advocates for those in the world who need to experience your justice. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Today, we are delighted to recognize high school and college graduates of First Lutheran Church here in Monmouth, and so it is our privilege to affirm these members of our congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move with great expectations to another. Graduates, I invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, my name is Maddie Blazing and I am a graduate from Monmouth Roseville High School. I'm going to be attending Monmouth College in the fall, majoring in elementary education, and I want to thank you all for your support over the years. Hi, my name is Dylan Esbaum, and I'm a 2020 graduate from Monmouth Roseville High School, and my future plans are to go to mechanics and small engine repair to possibly go to school somewhere in Peoria or Galesburg to learn more and grow my skills from mechanics and small engines. And I'd like to thank my congregation for all your support over the years. Hello everyone, I'm Heidi Gallagher and I'm a graduate of Monmouth Roseville High School. Um, I will be attending Northern Michigan University in the fall as a music education major, and I just really want to thank you all for your support that you've given me over the past two years. Hello, my name is Jacob Bide. I graduated from Carl Sandburg College in the spring of 2020. Uh, I obtained my Associate in Arts, and thank you for supporting me. Graduates, as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors, be mindful of your grounding in faith and of your vocation to serve God in all your life's work and accomplishments. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially for the milestones that Maddie, Dylan, Heidi, and Jacob have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all the experiences they encounter. 
Bless also the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in Christian faith. Give them strength in your continuing presence and give them many joyful reunions with their sons and daughters who may be leaving home soon to begin new and varied adventures. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, this is kind of a, a bit of an odd spot for us as Lutherans. We're not used to this. I know we're all sitting in our own homes. But I'm going to ask you to raise your hands uh, in a blessing motion. The students who are also watching this will feel the presence through the Holy Spirit of you blessing them today. We trust the Holy Spirit doing that. So raise your hand as we pray this blessing for our graduates. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve our God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First reading, Acts 17, 31 In Athens, Paul faces the challenge of proclaiming the gospel to, to Greeks who know nothing of either Jewish or Christian tradition. He proclaims that the unknowing God whom they worship is the true Lord of heaven and earth who will judge the world with justice through Jesus whom God has raised from the dead. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with, an, with the inscription to the, an unknown God. What, the, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made of human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far, not far from each of one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought to not we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the heart and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will give, he will have the world judged in righteousness by man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 66, 8 through 20. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all of you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. Uh. 
A reading from 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good, conducting Christ, may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous. In order, for, in order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I want to begin today's message with a brief baseball story. Yes, baseball actually ties in with today's gospel reading in a weird way. Uh, I know there were some who were worried uh, because a previous pastor always talked about the Cardinals or the pa Packers, but uh, I'm a Cubs fan. And so this story is actually going to be about the Cubs. Um, see, this gospel reading today, you heard the words where Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. How this relates to the Cubs is they were at one time, before they were known as the Cubs, known as the orphans. It's a weird way that they got that name. They had been coached by a person named Cap Anson, who coached them while the team was actually called the White Stockings. Uh, that was their original name when they started in 1871 and then again in 1876 with the National League. They were called the White Stockings until Cap Anson left them. He had managed them as a player and co head coach or manager for many years, and like some like 20 years or more, and then he just up and left. And then they started calling themselves the Orphans because their manager left them. This is what we think of when we think of the concept of orphans, right? Being abandoned, being left. For some youth in our world, it is a far too real experience. It's not a joke. It's not a silly thing that sporting teams use as a moniker. It's a real experience. And Jesus was preparing to leave his disciples. But he wanted to make sure that they knew they were not being orphaned just because he was leaving them. That another advocate from God the Father was coming to take care of them. And that's really what I want to focus on today, this concept of the advocate, right? The Holy Spirit, whom Jesus promises to send, is an advocate for us. 
One of the ways to understand the word advocate is in an intermediate, uh, intermediary kind of role, right? Someone who mediates between two parties, someone who intercedes on behalf of uh, one party to another. We see this role in our world. We've got advocates in many different places. Uh, Janice was sharing a story that when she worked with the hospital network, she was a patient advocate. She would speak on behalf of the patients when they felt they could not communicate well with the nurses, the doctors, or the administration. If they had questions that they felt weren't answered right, or if there was a problem they were trying to resolve, Janice, as the patient advocate, would intercede for them. She would help them, the patients, uh, come up with the right words and come up with the right solution and get the nurses, doctors, or administration, whoever the other party was, to either explain the answer more clearly so that it was better understood or come up with a different solution. An advocate. We know this role. My family has been involved with having advocates on our behalf and also been advocates when it comes to individual education plans. My son, Nate, has an IEP, and there have been times when we have struggled to get to that IEP when he was younger and in other districts where we've needed someone to come in and help us to say to the administration of the school district, what the Gallagher's are saying is this, and what you need to do to meet what they're saying is this, and then a lot of things would work out and we'd finally come to our agreement. We've also provided that role for some others in a couple different cases where we've known people who are working on IEPs and we've gone with them and sat and helped them because sometimes you know when you're trying to fight for yourself you're just so uh, impassioned and, and so uh, trained on something that you can't necessarily communicate fully for yourself you can't necessarily get your whole thought out or you think you have and you can't see the other side and so an advocate is there to help fill in uh, a little bit more of what you're trying to say and fill in what you don't know that you should be asking for and also help you better understand what you're also receiving. So the advocate has a lot of roles there. This is what Jesus is sending to us, is an advocate who is in one way an intermediary for us, an interceder for us. There are many other ways we can talk about the Holy Spirit. But we're going to focus on just this role this week. You know, the role of the intermediary. The Spirit is the one who intercedes for us with God the Father. When we open ourselves to prayer, to God, there are times that we don't know what it is we're supposed to say to God. How do I pray? What is it that I need to lift up to God? Sometimes we have such a, a burden that we are just so flustered that the only thing that can come is, a, is an image in our mind that we just can't fully put words to. But we're just, we've got this, we know what we want to say, we just can't figure it out. What is it we're trying to say? And this is where the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, comes to play. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us, right, with words too deep for even our size. The Holy Spirit knows the fullness of what we are trying to say to God and lifts that to God. Sometimes it's a burden that we're carrying, an illness, uh, a, a, a worry and anxiety. Sometimes it is a sin that we just don't know how to confess. We, it's, just, it's one of those sins that maybe we're embarrassed by. Maybe it's one we're, we're stuck with and and we just can't seem to figure out how to get around it. And we don't know how to approach God again for this. And we don't think that God is going to love us because this sin just has us so wrapped up. Enter the Advocate. Enter the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who goes to God on our behalf and says, I'll use my name for a little self-debasing, and says to God, hey, here's Gallagher. You know, Gallagher's stuck on this. He can't quite get the right words out. But let me tell you what he wants to say. He thinks you're not going to love him. And God will say back to the advocate, 
assure him I love him, assure him of my forgiveness. And the advocate comes back to me and says, hey, Gallier, guess what? You're forgiven. Guess what? God loves you. Guess what? God's never letting go. This is what the advocate does. He pleads on our behalf to God those things that we don't know how to communicate to God. And he pleads on God's behalf to us those things that we may not fully be able to grasp from God. That God does indeed forgive us every single day, even of those sins which are so deeply entrenched in us that we couldn't think of life any other way. Even those sins which we cling to because we're afraid to let them go. Even those sins which we are ashamed because of societal implications of those sins. God says, I forgive you. And we can't fathom that, but the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, pleads to us God's case that we are the loved and beloved children of God. And that God will never, ever let us go. It's kind of strange when we think about the Holy Spirit, the advocate, playing those, that dual role. It does start with us having to fathom that concept of forgiveness and that concept that God does love us and loves us always. But it doesn't end there. It, it takes on another life beyond that. The Holy Spirit, once, once God is and us have come to terms with this, I'm pleading for what I need heard, God is pleading for what God needs heard, and our lives are moving in the direction of right living with God, because the Holy Spirit is nudging us, advocating for us to that right living, then we find the next part of this advocate role that Jesus promises to send. See, yes, Jesus is sending two types of advocates. One is the Holy Spirit. The other is us, the disciples, the followers of Jesus. You might wonder, what does this mean? How can I be an advocate for God? Well, one of the ways is there are people out there in this world for whom they don't think they can approach a worshiping life with God. They think they can't be part of a community of Christ. They can't be part of the body of Christ. There are people out there who think they have been excluded. Maybe it's because they misunderstand what God does with Scripture and how God does not condemn but offers new life. But there have been other voices who use Scripture only to condemn and not to offer new life. The role of advocate that Jesus sends us in is, to, is that second role, to offer new life. How are we being advocates on God's behalf to offer new life to those who think they are excluded? To those for whom they think darkening the door of a sanctuary is not where they belong? We can be an advocate. We can be an advocate for God to say to them they do belong. They can be here. Their gifts and, and uh, their talents, their, what they offer for ministry is welcome here. They may not know fully how to express themselves in terms of why they feel excluded. And we can be an advocate for that as well. And we can say we understand what it's like to feel not included, and we can relate to what it means to hear the good news that we are included. This is the role of the advocate. There's some other ways this looks like for us as advocates. And maybe you heard a little bit of this earlier when we blessed the graduates this year. In that liturgy that I used, there was a prayer. And the entire last prayer that blessing that we offer to Dylan and Maddie and Heidi and Jacob, that is a commissioning for their role as advocates. And it's not their blessing alone. It is a blessing for all of us. It is a reminder to all of us of our vocation as advocates. We're to go out in the world in peace. 
We're to be of good courage. We're to advocate for good courage in the world. We're to hold what is good. We are to return no one evil for evil. Isn't that a difficult one in these days? Just stop and think about that for a moment. Return no one evil for evil. In our day and age of uh, the political strife that we have going on right now, especially in our social media, where when we see someone's post that we vehemently disagree with it, and so we begin by vehemently disagreeing with it. What if we stopped and said, return evil to no one evil for evil? What if we stopped and said, okay, Somebody out there has posted something that is evil, and I'm not going to return evil to that. What if we find a good way to lift up the one? What if we find a good way to advocate for positive change in discourse? We are to strengthen the faint-hearted. There's a lot of people who are faint-hearted in our world today, who, whose anxieties have hold of them, and we can advocate for them can listen to their anxieties and we can lift those up with them to God and we can advocate that God brings a peace that surpasses all, all understanding. Support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people. Imagine that as our role of advocacy, honoring all people. How often do we hear a group Sometimes they use the label Christian, uh, which is hard because you wonder how they can when they're not honoring all people because they want to discriminate against people. They want to take rights away from people. There's an anti-lynching uh, legislation that is for years been trying to get through the House and there were some people who claim to be Christian, although their groups have been labeled hate groups by other organizations, who wanted to remove people who are LGBTQ from that anti-lynching bill. That's not honoring all people. We, as advocates on God's behalf, are to honor all people. We may not agree with everybody. We're to honor them. We are to let them know there is a place for them in God's kingdom, right next to us, in the full presence of God. As advocates, we are to love and serve our God and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the commissioning that we gave to those graduates. It's a commissioning which we ourselves received in our baptisms when the Spirit of God descended upon our hearts. Listen to that hymn today. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. In our baptism, the Spirit of God descended upon our heart. Every single day since then, the Spirit of God descends upon our heart, calling us into the role of advocates. Some days our role of advocate is pretty easy. Kind of like a manager of a baseball team. You sit in the dugout, you make sure the players are in the right positions, you make sure the pitcher is throwing the right pitches, you make sure the team knows what play is coming. You let your batters know when to lay down a sacrifice bunt or when to pop out or when to hit and run. Some days being a manager is running out onto the field, kicking dirt across home plate and yelling and screaming at the home plate umpire defending one of your players for a call that was unjust. This is our role as advocates. This is what the Holy Spirit does for us. When something is unjust for us, the Holy Spirit is racing out there like that head manager, kicking up dust, defending us, getting thrown out of the game, only to come back again. Because the Holy Spirit can't actually be thrown out of this game. We, too, as the advocates, are to do that. We are to defend the people of God with that much fervor, with that much energy. Jesus is absent from us these days. Jesus has physically ascended. This week, Thursday, is the day of ascension. It is normally marked on our church calendars. It's the day we celebrate that Jesus returned to God the Father. But he did not leave us abandoned. He did not leave us orphaned. He did send that advocate. And that advocate is the Holy Spirit. And that advocate calls each of us to be advocates in the world. So no one is truly alone. Let us rejoice in our role as advocates. Let us give thanks that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. 
And let us continue to advocate for all in the world. Amen. And now, as the Holy Spirit moves through us, lifting us up into the presence of God and joining us together as one body of God, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we welcome... God into the sanctuaries of our homes. Let us pray for all the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words that echo today's psalm, O God, hear us. Abiding God, come into all the homes around the globe from which your people offer their prayer. Bless Christian leaders as they guide the church through this pandemic. Show our pastors and our church councils the way forward. Grant your grace also to the devout in other religions of the world. And show your kindness to all who search for you, whether within or outside the church. For this we pray, O God, hear us. Creating God, revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Especially, we pray for our local bodies of water, the Mississippi, Rock, and Illinois rivers, as well as all the small creeks that line our landscapes. Form us into the baptized body that protects the waters on which we rely. For this, we pray, O oh God, hear us. Righteous God, instill in all the leaders of nations a desire for justice and the will to serve the oppressed. We pray especially for those nations in which dictatorship threatens the population. Guide our nation's governors in their difficult pathway between the threat of disease and the dangers of scarcity and isolation. Bring our legislators into agreement about how to assist those in need. Give us patience in facing our current predicament. For this we pray, hear us, O God. Compassionate God, visit all who are in great need, those who suffer from the coronavirus, those living in loneliness and fear, those without jobs, and those who mourn their dead. Uphold those whose futures have been taken away from them. We pray for healthcare workers and for the residents in care homes and prisons and refugee camps, for countless persons who carry heavy burdens on their back. We pray and we call out to you all those names on our hearts and minds this morning. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Benevolent God, give the world a vaccine. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Father and motherly God, embrace all orphans. Support the agencies that attend to the world's orphans. Shield orphaned children from traffickers. Give to all nation wisdom concerning the refugees who are children. Watch over all children whose usual caregivers are absent. Form us into your children who love all for whom you have made. For this we pray, O God, hear us. Eternal God, your kingdom is here now, and it has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us, especially those who remember in our hearts. Unite us forever in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For this we pray, O God, hear us. 
With bold confidence in your love, merciful God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead rise, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.